Hi, am I in the air? Hello, right, all oh, right, all oh, right. What is going down, everybody? Welcome back to another brand new edition of Am I on the Air? My name is Don Mega. I'm your host, and I'm so happy that you're here to join me to get caught up with all the latest and the greatest when it comes to entertainment news, television, movies, non spoiler reviews. You come right here to Am I on the Air? It's season 27, episode 5. Tonight's show is titled Acting Out. We're going to be breaking down the news from September 13th through today, September the 19th, okay? We'll get you caught up with everything going on. So strap on in and let's get her going. So, you know, last week we didn't really have any movies to talk about. And this week almost turned into the same thing because the only new movie that came out was A Haunting in Venice. And I did not go see it. I am going to just wait for streaming on this one. And I've heard some decent stuff so far on it. But being that this is the third movie in this Agatha Christie series uh, with Kenneth Branagh, I did not like Murder on the Orient Express. I only slightly liked um, Death on the Nile just a little bit more. And then with this one kind of trying to take this supernatural approach, and I don't think the cast is as strong, I'm just not leaning into seeing this one so i did skip it uh unfortunately i'm sorry i know like the last couple weeks i've been skipping a lot of uh movies here for you guys but you know if i don't have any interest i can't waste the time i don't have enough time in the day to go watch these movies that i don't have interest in so um just wanted to put that out there but i did check out a new movie and it's a movie i've been actually really excited to see i saw the trailers a while ago and was really funny to me, and then it was only in very limited release, and it wasn't even playing around me, and then it finally, this past weekend, dropped on Hulu, and I'm talking about the new movie Theater Camp. This one here stars Ben Platt, Jimmy Tatro, um, Amy Sedaris, so this one here is about a beloved founder of a scrappy theater camp in upstate New York. She falls into a coma, and the eccentric staff must band together with her clueless crypto bro son to keep the paradise alive. So, yeah, basic, very simple premise. Right in the beginning of the movie, uh, Amy Sedaris runs this little theater camp, and she goes into a coma. And then it sounds like, you know, hey, all these kids, all these people that want to do this theater camp are getting ready to arrive. We're going to have to shut the camp down. So her son, played by Timmy Ch- Tatro, who I love this dude. He's so funny every time he pops up in anything. He plays her son, and he comes in, but he's like this clueless, like little weirdo guy who's just like, you know, hey, what's up? Let's get this party started. And And the rest of the theater camp have to try to band with him. To pull off a season, you know, without the camp shutting down. So, it's a comedy, and it's really funny. I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. It was way better than I thought it would be. Um, It was a fun time, especially being able to just watch it at home. Um, It's not, you know, any kind of groundbreaking thing, but, like, I like the premise. I like the concept of, like, these theater kids and the theater instructors and then the clueless son and just everybody played a very good role in this movie that just worked. It all cohesively came together. And, uh, and at the end of the movie, I was like, wow, I really, really enjoyed that. So, um, if you're looking for a fun time, if you're looking for a quick laugh, check it out. It's now streaming on Hulu. It's theater camp. Okay. All right, I'll, and I'd give Theater Camp three out of five stars, so it, it was really good. Okay, over on the TV side, got a couple quick things to talk about. Um, number one, 
I checked out the new documentary series on Netflix called Wrestlers, and I wasn't sure if I was going to watch this one, you know, and I am a big wrestling fan, but I'm a WWE fan, so it's hard for me to watch sometimes uh, wrestling stuff that's not a part of WWE. Um, but a couple months back, Apple TV Plus released one uh, called The Monster Factory, and it was really good. So I was inclined to give wrestlers a shot, and uh, I still haven't finished it. I still have two episodes left, but this documentary series follows a bunch of wrestlers uh, at the OVW um, Center in Kentucky, and uh, on oh no, Ohio Valley, and um, it's... OVW, for those of you that are fans of WWE, OVW used to be WWE's like playground. It was where wrestlers, when they got signed, they went to OVW. John Cena went to OVW. Batista went to OVW. Brock Lesnar went to OVW. Randy Orton. So a lot of wrestlers kind of cut their teeth in OVW. But then WWE created their own developmental program called NXT, and they moved away from OVW. OVW was going to shut down. It got some new owners. Uh, former wrestler Al Snow runs the place now, and this is a really cool documentary series just about trying to keep this OVW afloat, uh, the wrestlers that are trying to make their name in the company, and uh, just seeing how it all plays out, so it's it's shot very, very well, and um, I thought it was a great series, so looking forward to wrapping it up, I just wanted to give a shout out here. I also want to give a shout out to Class of 09. So this is the new show I got into this week. Only watched the first episode so far. And I know this this show came out a couple months ago. It's been on my queue. Haven't had a chance to get to it. But I'm finally starting to move through some things. This strike is allowing me time to get through a lot of shows since nothing new is really on. Class of 09 is on FX. It's also on Hulu. And it's a really cool series about a class of cadets that joined the FBI graduate and the show takes you through the past the present and the future um which i thought was really really cool and it stars kate mara you got brian tyree henry in here um jake mcdorman and i like the style of it right that you you're following these cadets that all join the fbi in the class of 09 and the show will bounce back and forth from the past which is 09 to the present uh, and then the future, which I believe is like 2039. So it has this window that kind of bounces back and forth throughout. And you're learning about these characters and, and maybe inside stuff that's going on. And like I said, I've only watched the first episode, but I really, really dug it. It's a drama. It's a crime. It's a mystery. It's a science fiction. Um, it's really, really cool with doing it in the three angles with the same characters. So, uh, I definitely shout it out. If you missed this one, check out class of 09. All episodes are now streaming over on Hulu. And lastly, I just want to shout out the return of the morning show. That's right. Morning show season three is now back and, uh, over on Apple TV plus and the first two episodes have dropped and then episode three dropped today. And um, this is the show with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. Uh, John Hamm joins the cast this season. I love this show. I really, really do. And sometimes I forget about this show because it has such gaps between the seasons. But, man, I watched the first two episodes they dropped and I was right back in it. I just, I love the drama in this show. I love the backstabbing. I love seeing the inside workings of this business. And, um... It's just so well acted. It's it's such a great show, and I'm so happy it's back. I can't wait to watch episode three. And uh, but yeah, check it out. If you guys didn't know the season was back, check it out. If you've never seen the morning show, go to Apple TV Plus and check out the first couple seasons. And now streaming. All right, guys, that is our TV shows and our movie. Once again, Theater Camp over on Hulu, three out of five stars. We got Rustlers over on Netflix, The Morning Show Season 3 on Apple TV+, and Class of 09 on Hulu. All right, let's switch gears. Let's get on over to our box office. Coming in at number 10, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, which, by the way, hit Paramount Plus today. So if you have Paramount Plus, you can stream the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie for free. So make sure you check it out. Number nine is Oppenheimer. Number eight, Gran Turismo. Number seven, Jawan. Number six, Blue Beetle. Number five, Barbie. Number four, My Big Fat Greek Wedding 3. Number three, The Equalizer 3. 
And coming in number two, couldn't quite get that number one spot. It's a haunting in Venice. And then number one, once again, was The Nun 2. And the funny thing is, is, man, the box office is so close between the number one and number two. They were battling it out all weekend. Haunting in Venice with $14.2 million, And The Nun 2 with $14.5 million. So look how close that is. Insane. But congratulations to The Nun holding it out for its second week in a row. All right, guys, let's get on over and talk news. Let's get you caught up with all the latest and greatest. Remember, you can check out all our trailers and news articles over on our Twitter page. Go to twitter.com slash am I on the air. Also on our Facebook page. So if you want to dig into anything, make sure you check it out there. A little social plug. Uh, so we have the new trailer for the Trolls movie. That's right, Trolls Band Together, which hits theaters on November 17th. And there's been rumors, a lot of rumors for the last couple months, is NSYNC getting back together. And um, they are. They're doing a new song for this Trolls movie. The song is called Better Place. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be, It's you can hear it in the trailer, and it's also going to be available on the movie and on the soundtrack. So the first new song from NSYNC in over 20 years on Trolls Band Together. And I think they're going to do some other stuff. So people are getting excited. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm James Lovino, and I'm here to tell you about Alternate Sides, a movie podcast with a twist. I've worked in the film business for two decades, but I haven't actually seen that many movies, and this has been driving my frequent collaborator, Saab, a self-confessed film snob, crazy. So every week, while he's stuck in his car trying to avoid getting a parking ticket, thanks to New York City's Alternate Side parking regulations, We discuss a classic film I've finally just gotten around to seeing, Alternate Sides, a new podcast about movies, parking, and a 25-year friendship, wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Um, Talking about Aquaman 2, we have the new poster. We have the new trailer, which I absolutely love this trailer it was fantastic i've been looking forward to this movie i like the first aquaman movie and this looks like it's more fun in the same vein so looking really really forward to it make sure you check out the trailer it is fun 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 there is some cheesiness in there i won't i won't let that slide um i won't tell you what it is but there's some cheesiness in there but at the same time i like the action adventure vibes i like the brother vibes there's definitely a thor loki vibe going on in here with aquaman and his brother um but one thing i noticed in the trailer was like one shot of amber heard as mara um and we know she's in the movie and then there's been a lot of rumors since the johnny depp case that her role got pared down um So James Gunn, or not James Gunn, James Wan (laughs) was talking about the Amber Heard stuff um, and and her role being pared down due to the fallout from her divorce with Johnny Depp. But James Wan says the first Aquaman movie was an Arthur and Mara journey, as the second movie was always going to be an Arthur and Orm movie. So he says her role is not cut down and she's in it just fine, but the movie is about him and Orm. Um, So... We'll see. We'll see. I mean, he talks in the trailer about being married and having a kid. Obviously, that's Mara. I think we will get more, but I think they're just kind of watching what they do with the advertising, right? Just like uh, Marvel trying to advertise Loki but not show Jonathan Majors very much, you know? (laughs) So, but guys, I love the trailer. Make sure you check it out. Um, You know, we'll see. We'll see if this could be the big uh, hit that the first one was and maybe salvage a little bit of DC hope this year. Uh, or will it fall out like the rest of the DC slate this year? We will have to see. So uh, Bill Maher had come out and said he was going to start his real-time show over on HBO without his writers. Uh, well, yesterday he backtracked on that and pulled back and said, uh, we'll go ahead and delay the show. So so some time had gone by, and uh, yeah, he changed his tune. Uh, same kind of thing with Drew Barrymore. She was going to start her show back up. And she has reversed her decision as well, too. So uh, CBS has also now confirmed that the talk season 14 will premiere on Monday, September 18th. um, As the daytime talk show is, of course, facing backlash over airing during the strikes, just like we just talked about with the other one. Um, And the Jennifer Hudson show says she wants to return um, right now as well, too. Ellen DeGeneres is returning to television with a two-hour documentary special called Saving the Gorillas, 
Ellen's Next Adventure. So that will be coming soon over on Discovery. Um, let me see here. Dark Harvest. We have the new trailer for David Slade's new Halloween-themed horror movie. Shining Veil vale, Season 2 trailer for Courtney Cox's new um, show over on Stars. This is Season 2. I wanted to watch Season 1, never got around to it. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's getting a second season, I should definitely jump into this one and check it out because I hear it's a, a comedy horror. So that sounds good to me. I want to check that out. Retribution, the new Liam Neeson movie, has hit v premium VOD, so you can now rent or buy it. Check it out. Uh, I love this promo for Saw 10 that just came out where they parody the AMC Nicole Kidman commercial um, with basically just updated dialogue for the Saw movies. It was super hilarious. Check it out if you get a chance. We have the final trailer for The Creator, which is John David Washington's new sci-fi movie, which the early buzz says this is one of the best movies of the year. So very, very exciting. Looking forward to this movie big time. The Marsh King's Daughter. This movie was supposed to come out in just a couple weeks. It has been delayed to the beginning of November. Because why? To avoid that Taylor Swift box office clash. That's right. Everybody getting the hell out of the way for Taylor Swift. There's also a Hillary Swank movie uh, that was supposed to come out next uh, in the next couple weeks as well. That has not only been pushed out of October, but has been pushed to February of next year because of Taylor Swift. So everyone is getting out the way. Um, and you know, I think they all need to calm down, man. There's more, more people out there than Taylor Swift fans, but I, I just find it so funny that everybody's getting the hell out of the way of this Taylor Swift movie. Like it's an Avengers movie. Uh, we have the Simpsons season 35 trailer. So you could check that out. Uh, Jessica Chastain and Michael Franco have already shot another movie together. It's called dreams. So, uh, they, they like their pairing there. We have the new killers of the flower moon trailer with Leonardo DiCaprio. Check that out. Uh, once again, Aquaman, the lost kingdom will hit theaters on December 20th. So looking forward to seeing that one there. Um, the live action one piece series has been renewed for a season two over at Netflix. So congratulations. I know a lot of people really liking that one. Hulu has launched their top 15. Everybody's putting list up on their streaming services. What I like about the Hulu one is that it's just top 15 general. So they have a mix of movies and TV shows. Um, and it'll be updated daily. So check out the top 15. So you'll never know what you could find on that list. You'll be like, oh, I didn't even know this was on Hulu. So it's good stuff. I like it. Uh, Max has released the first official teaser trailer for its animated Harley Quinn spinoff, Kite Man. Hell yeah. Which is set to debut in 2024. Uh, I don't, I am not interested in Kite Man. I'm sorry. I love DC, but I don't think I can wrap my head around that one. The Lando Calrissian Disney Plus series is going to actually be a movie. That's right. Remember, we reported probably a couple months ago that Donald and Stephen Glover were writing it. And Stephen let it slip on a recent podcast that the idea right now is to do a movie. And Lucasfilm has confirmed that, yes, they want it to be a film. So there you go, man. Lando, no longer a Disney Plus series and will be a movie. We have the first trailer for the Frasier revival. That's right. Frasier is back. Kelsey Grammer is back. The first two episodes of the Frasier revival will stream on October 12th over on Paramount Plus. And they're even going to air it a week later on CBS. So I don't know if they're going to do the whole season on CBS or they're just doing the first couple episodes to try to sucker everyone into subscribing to Paramount Plus and then watching the rest there, which is probably the smart move to do. So October 12th, check it out. Prime Video has set Donald Glover as Mr. and Mrs. Smith series to premiere in 2024. It was supposed to come out this year. They pushed it back a little bit. Uh, the show in which Glover stars opposite Pen15 favorite Maya Erskine is based on the 2005 film that starred Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. So I believe this is coming out in March now. So they're, you know, the strikes have gotten this one pushed back a little bit. Big Mouth Season 7 is on the way, and Megan the Stallion has joined the Netflix series, so get ready, that is coming soon. Bad Boys 4 director talks about a less dramatic tone. He, they say that the new Bad Boys 4 movie, they want to go more comedy, and so uh, they're going to get a different tone than the previous film, so, uh, which laid more on the dramatic side. He said they, they wanted to get back to the laughs, and I love the sound of that, so I'm looking really forward to Bad Boys 4. 
We have the trailer for Divinity, which is a bizarre Bella Thorne sci-fi movie that is produced by Steven Soderbergh. Very interesting. So check that out. John Carpenter's Suburban Screams. Uh, we have the trailer for it, and it's coming soon to Peacock. We have the trailer for Goosebumps, starring Justin Long. This is coming not only to Disney+, Plus, but it's also going to be on Hulu as well. It's a new series, obviously based on the R.L. Stein books. We have the trailer for Lessons in Chemistry. This is the new Apple TV Plus series starring Brie Larson, where she becomes a chemist and TV host. Uh, looks really interesting. I think it's based on a book, and I love Brie, so I'll probably check this one out. Sean Levy uh, working on his new Star Wars movie, so hopefully uh, he'll get that up and running soon after he's done with Deadpool 3. Dancing with the Stars Season 32 lineup has been revealed, so we got that posted if you want to check it out. The Harry Potter TV series reboot producer promises that they will explore the books more deeply, which is definitely following the tone of what we heard. You know, if they're going to do a TV series, that they could have more time to dig into these Harry Potter books, so there you go. Aquaman the Lost Kingdom director confirms that William Defoe does not return in the sequel. It sounds like a Brightburn sequel is on the way, and I love the sound of that. I love, love, loved Brightburn so much. I cannot wait if they bring this thing back for a sequel. I really hope so. Fingers crossed. Snowpiercer Season 4 is still searching for a new home following its cancellation. So, yeah, I think it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to find a, a, a platform to pick up a show that's already been canceled unless they want to bring it back. And they probably can't bring it back for another season because I'm sure most of the actors thought they were done with this series, right? So it's basically a one and done. It's a, it's a hard one to get. I mean, I bet it ends up on like a freebie or a Tubi or something like that, but we'll have to see. Over on The Masked Singer, we got a judge shakeup for the first time as Nicole Scherzinger is out and Rita Ora will be in for season 11. The WGA and SAG after strikes must be settled by October 1st in order to salvage the scripted TV season. Uh, this worries me, guys. I love my TV seasons, and hearing that it has to be resolved by October 1st to salvage the TV season is worrisome because it's September 19th, and we're nowhere close to this thing being done. Um, I think we're going to be screwed on new shows this season for the most part, and that sucks. The Marvel VFX workers have unanimous, unanimously voted to unionize. I think that's great, and that's very awesome for them to do that. We have the Season 4 first look at For All Mankind, which is coming in November to Apple TV+. A Door the Explorer short will play ahead of the Paw Patrol movie. We have the first trailer for Wes Anderson's The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar, which premieres on September 27th over on Netflix. The Wonder Years has been canceled at ABC after two seasons. This is a bummer, and this is bullshit. This is one of the funniest shows on television. It's one of the sweetest shows on television. It's one of the best acted shows on television. I mean, for a scripted comedy, half-hour comedy sitcom, Wonder Years was a gift. It was a blessing. It was an awesome show. And it so got screwed in its second season. It had a great first season, got renewed, and then the second season got pushed all the way back to the summer. So people forgot about it. And then it just kind of quietly got dumped on TV and on Hulu. And then the ratings were down. And you wonder why, right? This was a normal scheduled primetime show during its first season. And in its second season, they skipped the entire normal primetime series slot and just dumped it over the summer when no one was watching. It's just unfortunate. I hate to see great shows get cut early. And this show was a great show. And all I can hope is that maybe someone else will swoop in and kind of pick it back up. But, I, you know, usually it doesn't happen for shows like this. But I really hope it does. I hope we get surprised here soon that someone picked it up and brought it back. Because it was a fantastic show. So, uh, very sad to see Wonder Years canceled after two seasons. We have the season two trailer for Our Flag Means Death, so check that out. Um, we have the trailer for Appendage, which is Hulu's new horror movie. Uh, A24's Dix the Musical has been uh, delayed, so uh, we're going to have to wait a little bit longer on that one. We have the trailer for The Conference, which is Netflix's new slasher comedy. Um, let me 
see here. Sorry, I skipped some of this stuff. Winning Time, which is a show people love over on HBO, just abruptly got canceled over the weekend. Winning Time will have to end with the Lakers losing in the 1984 NBA championship going to the Boston Celtics. HBO has confirmed that Sunday's finale was the final episode of the series. What a bummer, man. A lot of people really loving this show, hoping it was going to get renewed, and it didn't even get a proper goodbye. Bummer. Bummer. I didn't even watch the show, and I would be super, super pissed if that was the case. So that really, really sucks. Uh, The talk. We we were talking what ugh, we were talking earlier in the show about like how Drew Barrymore pulled her show back, Bill Maher pulled his show back, and then we were talking about how the talk was going to just proceed with its premiere. Well, the the talk is now paused its season premiere as well, and we'll evaluate plans for a new launch date. So everybody's thinking this stuff through and saying I shouldn't probably come out right now. So they're going to pause on that one. Uh, Marvel Studios Loki Season 2 is going to start streaming on October 5th at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. I love this. This is something that Ahsoka does, right? Ahsoka's release date is technically on a Wednesday, but on Tuesdays at 6 o'clock West Coast Time and 9 o'clock East Coast Time, Ahsoka drops. So you can actually watch it the night before in prime time, right? Not having to wait for like a midnight release. Well, it's so successful with Ahsoka that Loki, which was supposed to drop on Fridays starting October 6th, is going to do the same thing and actually drop earlier on Thursday nights, 6 p.m. West Coast, 9 p.m. East Coast, so we can get that primetime Loki. I love it. Let's go. Doom Patrol, man, they did a first half of their season, then the show got canceled, and everybody's been wondering, where the hell is the rest of the season? Well, finally, we have found out that the new that the last batch of episodes will drop on Max in October. So there you go. Dark Winds has been renewed for a season three. That's the AMC drama. Troll 2, the Norwegian monster movie, has been getting a sequel over on Netflix. Uh, the first film broke records, and the director has been asked to come back and direct Troll 2 for Netflix. We have the trailer for Beckham, which is Netflix's newest sports documentary series about the football star. A live sports tier is coming to Max next month, and it will have a free promo period. So when it gets released in October, you'll get to watch it for free. The live sports tier, officially titled the BR Sports Add-On, will premiere on Max on Thursday, October 5th. All Max subscribers will be able to access it for free all the way up to February 29th. After that, it will cost $9.99 to add on to any Max package. The tier will be made up of Warner Brothers Discovery Sports Premium Live Sports, which includes the MLB, NHL, NBA, NCAA Men's March Madness, and U.S. Soccer. They will simulcast live via the Bleacher Report Sports, but will also continue to air on TNT, TBS, and True TV, alongside live sports pre- and post-game programming and VOD content will also be included. So... Lots of sports coming to Max. You get it for free to February and then a $10 add-on. The Dutchman is a new movie being put together. And Andre Holland, Zazie Beetz have joined this psychological thriller movie. Um, We have the new Percy Jackson teaser trailer for the show. Comes on to Disney Plus in December. But check out the new teaser trailer. Looks pretty cool. The Boogeyman is coming in October to Hulu. So that was the movie that came out over the weekend. Or over the weekend. Over the summer, based on the Stephen King adaptation. Uh, did pretty well at the box office also. I did not like this movie at all. But it's coming to Hulu in October, so keep your eyes out for it. Star Trek Discovery Season 5 is going to return to its action-adventure roots. So that is pretty cool there. Uh, Chris Evans not ruling out his return to Captain America. He says, you know, I'm, you know... He says, never say never, you know, the right time, right place comes. I love that role. I'll be back. So love that. We have the season two trailer for Quantum Leap. So it sounds like they got the most of the filming done for this one before the strikes. So we can actually get a new season. So very cool there. Uh, Rumor has it that John Travolta has been cast in Quentin Tarantino's last movie, The Movie Critic. Uh, So, yeah, so we'll see if that ends up being true. But that's the rumor mill right there. 
I talked earlier about a Hillary Swank movie that was supposed to come out but avoided Taylor Swift. The movie's called Ordinary Angels. It was supposed to come out, I believe, October 11th, and it's now been pushed to February of 2024 to avoid the Swifties. Uh, congratulations to Elemental, which has become Disney Plus's most watched movie premiere of 2023. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. I still have not seen Elemental. I put it in my queue now that it's on Disney Plus, and maybe we'll check it out this weekend. We will see. Uh, we have the new trailer for Dream Scenario, which is Nicolas Cage's new A24 comedy. Uh, X and Pearl sequel Maxine will reportedly be a slasher murder mystery. Okay, I like it, I like it. Taika Waititi's Star Wars movie is reportedly dead. No shocker here, because every time anyone brings this up to Taika Waititi, he just says, I haven't written the script yet, so I think he was over it. Good Burger 2 is officially hitting Paramount Plus in November, so keep your eyes out for that. Uh, Over at the film festivals, this new movie Hitman has been screening, and everybody's been talking about how great it is. It's directed by Richard Linklater, and it stars Glenn Powell. The movie has officially been picked up by Netflix, so there you go. It'll be coming soon to Netflix. We have the trailer for Radical, which is Eugenio Debrez's new uh, inspiring students movie. Uh, which was uh, wowing people in Sundance So you could check out the first trailer for that We have the trailer for Berlin Which is the Netflix Money Heist spinoff Roald Dahl's The Twits is being anima- uh, adapted Into a Netflix animated movie The new Nicolas Cage movie Butcher's Crossing Is supposed to be getting a release in October So it's a new western thriller Keep an eye out for that we have the documentary trailer for Milli Vanilli, which I cannot wait to watch this. This comes out in October on Paramount Plus. Um, let's see here. We have the Chucky trailer for season three. We have a fall TV update from ABC. Uh, Mark Webb is going to direct Skydance's Bermuda Triangle movie. And lastly, we have the new poster for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This hits theaters and IMAX on November 17th. And along with that new poster is the new trailer. That's right. Witness the rise of power. This is the new official trailer that just came out. Check it out for The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Once again in theaters on November 17th. And on that note, my friends, we've hit that half hour mark and we are done. So thank you so much for tuning in and listening to me get you caught up with the latest and greatest in entertainment news. I hope you feel like you're leaving with more knowledge in your head. Uh, make sure you follow us on social media. Go to our webpage, amiontheair.com, and uh, you know leave a bookmark there for that. Everything you need is on amiontheair.com. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash am I on the air. Give us a follow on Twitter or X at am I on the air. You can follow me at DX Don Mega. Same handles over on threads as well. If you like threads, um, make sure you subscribe to the podcast, Apple podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Google podcast, Amazon music. We're on everything. Subscribe, leave a little review, thumbs up, five stars, whatever you like, do it, please, please. And of course, follow us on all the social medias, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. It's all simply at Am I on the Air. Thank you to our great affiliates at Red Dragons Radio and the Pop Culture Pros. Make sure you follow on Twitter at Red Dragons Radio, all one word, reddragonsradio.com. And the Pop Culture Pros, follow on Twitter at Pop Culture underscore Pros. Thank you for always streaming our show on demand and supporting us. And on that note, That's our show, ladies and gentlemen. I am getting back to the theater this weekend. Going to be checking out Expendables 4 or Expendafoles. Expendafoles. (laughs) They're trying to do the logo. Uh, But, yeah, looking forward to seeing Sly and the gang kick some ass. And uh, we'll be back next week to get you caught up with all the latest and the greatest. So take care of yourselves and each other. And until next time, y'all, peace. Red Dragons!